First Samuel 14. A detachment of the Philistim went out to the pass of Michmash, and it came to be one yom that Jehunathan, son of Shaul, said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the outpost of the Philistim, which is on the other side. But he did not inform his father. And Shaul remained at the outskirts of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree, at Migron. And the people who were with him were about six hundred men. And Achia, son of Akitub, Ikabod's brother, son of Pinekas, son of Ali, the priest of Yahuwah in Shiloh, was wearing a shoulder garment. And the people did not know that Yehunathan had gone. And between the passes, by which Yehunathan sought to go over to the outpost of the Philistim, there was an edge of a rock on one side and an edge of a rock on the other side. And the name of one was Batsets and the name of the other, Sene. The one edge was on the north opposite Michmash, and the other on the south opposite Gibeah. And Yehunathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, and let us go over to the outpost of these uncircumcised. If so be, Yahuwah does work for us, for there is no hindrance for Yahuwah to save by many, or by few. And his armor-bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart, Incline yourself. See, I am with you according to your heart. And Yehunathan said, See, we are passing over to the men, and show ourselves to them. If they say this to us, wait until we come to you, then we shall stand still in our place and not go up to them. But if they say this, come up to us, then we shall go up. For Yahweh has given them into our hand, and this is the sign to us. And both of them disclosed themselves to the outpost of the Philistim. And the Philistim said, See, the Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden. And the men of the outpost called to Yehunathan and his armor-bearer, and said, Come up to us, and let us teach you a lesson. Then Yehunathan said to his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for Yahuwah has given them into the hand of Yesharal. And Yehunathan climbed up on his hands and knees with his armor-bearer after him, and they fell before Yehunathan, and his armor-bearer was putting them to death behind him. And that first slaughter which Yehunathan and his armor-bearer made was about twenty men in about half an acre of land, and there was trembling in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The outpost and the raiders also trembled, and the ground shook, and it became a trembling of Allahim. And the watchmen of Shaul in Gibeah of Benjamin looked and saw the throng melting away, and they went here and there. And Shaul said to the people who were with him, Please inspect and see who has gone from us. So they inspected and saw that Yehunathan and his armor-bearer were missing. And Shaul said to Akia, Bring the ark of Allahim here. For the ark of Allahim was with the children of Yesharal on that yom. And it came to be, while Shaul talked to the priest, that the noise which was in the camp of the Philistim went on and became great. So Shaul said to the priest, Withdraw your hand. And Shaul was called, and all the people who were with him, and they went to the battle. And see, Every man's sword was against his neighbor, a very great confusion. And the Hebrews who were with the Philistim before that time, who went up with them into the camp, turned round, they too, to be with Yisharal, who were with Shaul and Yehunathan. And all the men of Yisharal, who had hidden in the mountains of Ephraim, heard that the Philistim fled, and they also pursued them in the battle. Thus Yahuwah, delivered Yisharal that yom, and the battle passed over to Beit Awan. And the men of Yisharal were distressed that yom, for Shal had placed the people under oath, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food until evening, and I have taken revenge on my enemies. Therefore none of the people tasted food, and all they of the land came into the woods, and there was honey on the ground. And the people came into the woods and saw the honey dripping, but no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. 
But Jehunathan had not heard that his father had taken an oath of the people. And he stretched out the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes lit up. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly took an oath of the people, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food today. And the people were weary. And Yehunathan said, My father has troubled the land. Now see how my eyes lit up when I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had well eaten today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found. For then would not the slaughter among the Philistim have been greater? And they smote the Philistim that Yom from Mikmash to Ayalon. So the people were very weary, and the people pounced on the spoil, and took sheep and cattle and calves, and slaughtered them on the ground. And the people ate with the blood. And they told Shaul, saying, Look, the people are sinning against Yahweh by eating with the blood. And he said, You have acted treacherously. Roll a large stone to me today. And Shaul said, Scatter among the people, and say to them, Each one bring his ox near to me, and each one his sheep, and you shall slaughter them here, and eat, and do not sin against Yahuwah by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him, that Lila, and slaughtered it there. And Shaul built an altar to Yahuwah. It was the first altar he built to Yahuwah, and Shaul said, Let us go down after the Philistine by Lila, and plunder them until the morning light, and not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, Let us draw near to Allahim here. And Shaul asked of Allahim, Should I go down after the Philistine? Do you give them into the hand of Yisharal? But he did not answer him that Yom. And Shaul said, Come over here, all you chiefs of the people, and know and see what this sin was today. For as Yahuwah lives, who saves Yisharal, though it be in Yahunathan, my son, he shall certainly die. But not one among all the people answered him. And he said to all Yisharal, You be on one side, and my son Yahunathan and I be on the other side. And the people said to Shaul, Do what seems good to you. Then Shaul said to Yahuwah Alahim of Yisharal, Give a perfect lot. And Shaul and Yahunathan were taken, but the people escaped. And Shaul said, Cast lots between my son Yahunathan and me. And Yahunathan was taken. Shaul then said to Yahunathan, Explain to me what you have done. And Yahunathan explained to him and said, I only tasted a little honey with the end of the rod that was in my hand. See, let me die. And Shaul answered, Allah him do so, and more also, for you shall certainly die, Yahunathan. But the people said to Shaul, Should Yahunathan die, who has wrought this great deliverance in Yisharal? Far be it, as Yahuwah lives, let not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has wrought with Allah him this yom. Thus the people delivered Yahunathan, and he did not die. And Shaul returned from pursuing the Philistim, and the Philistim went to their own place. And Shaul took the reign over Yisharal, and fought against all his enemies round about, against Moab, and against the children of Ammon, and against Adam, and against the kings of Tsoba, and against the Philistim. And wherever he turned, he inflicted punishment. And he gathered an army, and smote the Amalekites, and delivered Yisharal from the hands of those who plundered them. And the sons of Shaul were Yahunathan, and Yishui, and Malkishua. And the names of his two daughters were these, the name of the firstborn Merab, and the name of the younger Michal. And the name of Shaul's Asha was Akinoam, the daughter of Akimatz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, father is Light, son of Ner, uncle of Shaul. And Kish was the father of Shaul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Abial. And there was fierce fighting against the Philistim, all the Yomim of Shaul. 
And when Shaul saw any mighty man or any brave man, he took him for himself.